Okay. This is a Kita Chet special. Okay. Literally this morning, somebody let the cat out of the bag. They sent me a quick text. And they said, you should know that Rabbi Lu, which I think needs no introduction for most Hasidim, Rabbi Lu is in hell. And I text back, where do I get a hold of him? So I asked Rabbi Shmukler. Rabbi Shmukler went home to the next person, and we were able to cut a half hour of Rabbi Lu's time. He slept in from Northridge. He spent literally a half hour with us. He's going right back to Northridge. So he's here in Cheder for 25 minutes to half hour. And he said, what better opportunity on the week of Chav Beis Shat, the yards of the Benemtsin, to be able to have our Kipta Ches Talmidim a little bit mm-hmm. with Rabbi Lu. And it was one of the few, few privileged Hasidim over the course of the years to have had a very, very close personal relationship mm-hmm. with the Benemtsin. Close relationship with the Rebbe as well. Every Chassid has a close relationship with the Rebbe, but with the Rebbe, soon very few were privileged to have it in a very revealed manner. Rebbe Lu is one of them, and he has agreed to come in and familiar with us a little bit. I'm not going to take any more time for introductions. We thank him for doing so, and I ask you once to give Rebbe Lu your dedicated and your attention as he brings with us in the middle of a regular weekday, but in the preparation for a couple of shots. Thank you very much. Before I talk about the Rebbe, I want to give you a special message from the Rebbe himself for you. I'll tell you a story which happened 50 years ago when I was married and we were married in New York but my wife is from England. So right after the Hassan, the Hassan was on a Sunday, a Tuesday, we went to England. And on Monday, we were in Yechidis with the Rebbe. And the Rebbe said, the Hassan and Kala just got married. He said, you're going to England, but it's a shlichus, like a market shlichus. And we should visit people and uh, 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 spread the spartum of the Americans. And go to Moises. So we spent that summer, we were in England for about five or six weeks. And while we were there, we went to different places, including Camp Gan Yisrael in England. Whoever heard of Camp Gan Yisrael? Everybody. In those days, there were a few Camps Gan Yisrael, you know, there were around the world. Then we came back, it was in Chodesh Ov, just at the end, in August. And Rabbi Chadakov was the Rebbe's personal private secretary. Rabbi Chadakov called me over and he said he has a message from the Rebbe. The Rebbe wants my wife and me to go to Detroit. And the Rebbe will pay the tickets to fly to Detroit. He said, Ken Gan Yisrael in Detroit is not over yet. Another couple of days. And the Rebbe wants you to go speak to the children in the camp there and to tell them that even though they're in the camp and they have tremendous achdos together, that they should know that there's Camp Gan Yisrael all over the world. And that you just saw the one in England and you're giving a living regard because the Rebbe wants children in his different moistures to feel that they're part of a global family, a worldwide family. And we went the next day to England, to Detroit. And it was the last, last day of camp. That night there was the banquet at the whole big special event. And I spoke and I sang and, I, and we spoke all about that this camp on this road, people should feel it for Achtos. And I felt that this is the Rebbe telling me when I go to different places, I travel a lot. I'm giving you right now regards from the children in our Chabad school in London. And I feel this is the Rebbe asking me to tell you this. And with your permission, when I go back, in a few days' time, to England, I will give your regards to the children in the schools there. Have your permission? Yes. Thanks. So I, I, now I got something to go back with. I got a Shlich Smith already. Better than a dollar even. I got a message. 
I better go back and remind everyone that we are 6,000 miles apart, but we're really one Hasidim of one family. And now I come over to the Rebbe I'll tell you a story, maybe with the same theme. And then I'll tell you a personal story which happened to me with the Rebbe Tzim, just to give you a little bit of a glimpse of what the Rebbe Tzim was. I heard this story from a woman who lives in Belgium, that's in Europe. And she was a girl who was learning in New York in Mohan Khanna. Mohan Khanna had a lot of Balchuva girls from all over America, all over the world. And also they were like Shluchai's older girls from the Babish families. And the woman who was Ema Bayek, the woman who was like in charge there, was a very close personal friend of the Rebbe Tzinchaya Mushke. And she arranged that Purim time, I think it was, she arranged that, I think four girls, a certain small group of girls, would go and visit the Rebbe Tzin and would give a present from all of the girls with a card or some kind of a nice uh, presentation and they would spend a little time, maybe a half hour, Habrenim with the Rebbe Tzin. And this woman, now she's a woman, now she's a baba living in, uh, in Belgium, then she was a girl, and she was part of the group that won the girl that went to the Rebbe Tzin. And they gave the Rebbe Tzin, I think, a, a, um, a nice crystal a little bowl or something, and they made a card with beautiful calligraphy, very nicely written, wishing the Rebbe to a happy Purim or whatever the occasion was, and signed by all the girls of Mahakana. And the Rebbe said, this card is so precious. He said, the gift, thank you for the gift. But the card is more precious to me than the gift, he said, because it's the people, it's a personal thing. That's how the Rebbe felt for the individual, for the person. And then she asked the girl, tell me something about yourselves. So one girl said, I'm from Bolivia somewhere, South America. Another one said, I'm from the valley in California. And another one said, I'm from Alabama. And another one said, I'm from England. That one girl, who she was like, like, like a crown nuts girl, maybe she said, Ich bin ein Egen. She says, I'm one of us. So she said Yiddish, I'm one of us. So the Rebbe Tzim said, Allah Zenin Egen on the Four words. A lot you can learn from it. The Rebbe Tzim said, Allah Zenin Egen on the You know what that means? I'll translate. We are all part of us, the Babich people. The whole of Babich, we are one. There's an Achdus, at which the Rebbe Tzim promoted. The Rebbe Tzim is a person who we've never seen. She didn't come to any Fabrenian. She didn't come to Shul, Rosh Hashanah, to hear the tears. Either the Rebbe blew for her at home, earlier years maybe, or she was in the Shul, there was a little Shul in the Friedrich Rebbe's apartment upstairs, or the Megillah, all of these things, she never came in public to get COVID or to get uh, people to make a big fuss over her. She was totally dedicated to the Rebbe and to making the Rebbe able to do his job, which is leading Claudius Yisrael better. And in that sense, everything that we have today, the impact, the effect which the Rebbe had on the whole world is because of her. Because the Rebbe gave up the attention that maybe she would have had. The Rebbe spent time with her every day, by the way. But the idea that the Rebbe was totally, totally dedicated, she gave this with love. And what did she want? Just like the Rebbe wanted, that we should all be ba'achtas. Mm -hmm. There's no bigger matona, and it goes back to the Alter Rebbe. The first Rebbe, he said, when they asked the Alter Rebbe, why did you make Hasidus, Chabad? What is it about? And 
Ja, de Rebbe zegt, chesidus is, als alle chesidim zal zijn bij één mishpoche al bij teure beaven. Het is in de hajonjem en van alle teures. Chesidus is, dat we should all be like one family al bij teure beaven. En als ik het met je moet delen, dan is het wat het is. Dat is wat het is. De achters, de Rebbe told me, tell the children in other countries, they should be connected to children in the other country. And this person comes from a Baljuba family, this one comes from 10 generations Hasidim family, this one comes from a family which was Hasidim, not Chabad, or from Aguda family, Mizrahi, Hungarians, Hasfadim, Ashkenazim, whatever it is, <coughs> what the Rebbe wanted, they should be Achtos, and the Rebbe said, we are all belong to each other. We all belong. We're all together. One. Now I'll tell you a personal, personal story that happened to me. It's very embarrassing. I'm going to tell you something extremely embarrassing that happened to me. And I'm telling it to you because I want you to hear a little bit about what the Rebbeton is like. Did anything embarrassing ever happen to you? <coughs> Probably everybody had a different embarrassing story that happened to them. Okay, what happened to me? This happened 50, almost 51 years ago. I was a bocha, a chosen, and my father-in-law was Reb Zalman Jaffe, all of our And he asked the Rebbe, can we invite the Rebbitzin to, uh, to, uh, to the Hassan that's going to take place? His daughter, <coughs> together with me, with Habach in 770. And the Rebbe said, to, and this, 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 this Rebbe said to him, my wife does not go, she would not be able to come, she does not go to any public occasions, but she would be very happy to be invited, <coughs> and she'll be there in spirit. And she knows you because you always say it with flowers. That's what that was in English. You always say, because my shvei to send flowers to the Nebuchadnezzar. <coughs> so we went there on Sunday, Ches Tammuz, Koshen Chav Gimel. It was a week before the wedding. It was a hot Sunday afternoon. And there we went into the Rebbe's house. It's the first time I ever went in. It's the first time I ever saw the Rebbe in no English. She would come to 770 to see her mother, the old Rebbeton, the Hamadina, where the Rebbeton would go in through the side, to the back, when nobody was around. She was a very, very uh, tznur, very uh, private woman. So this was the first time I actually met her. And here we were, my father-in-law, Allah Shalom, my mother-in-law, Allah Shalom, my brother-in-law, Lita, my wife, with my collar then, Lita, and myself, Lita, Lita Rebbe. Six people around this table. The table had a beautiful white linen tablecloth, and there was fancy, like cakes and things like that, like to, to, um, it was like nice, good food there, like cake and drinks, it was a very hot day, and there was Beautiful china plates, very nice material, set out beautifully. And there were gold forks, little cake forks. That you, you ever see forks that you use especially for cake? Yes. Little ones, okay? These were made of gold, and they had a monograph, they had initials on them, SS. I didn't know what SS meant then. And later on, I heard that this was something that the Rebbeton got from her sister whose name was Shana Schneerson, the youngest sister who was killed by the Nazis in Treblinka. The, the youngest daughter of the Rebbe, the Rebbe, the Rebbe said, Shana, I'm sure you all know different people who are called Shana. You know anybody called Shana? Named after the, I have two Enigluch named Shana. Anyway, <coughs> they had a little SS on the gold floor, and then there was beautiful crystal cut glass tall glasses and in these glasses each glass had in it a straw and the straw was made of glass did you ever see who ever saw a straw made of glass 
I never did either when I was your age. The first time I saw it was that day. It's I suppose you fancy fancy straws to drink with that were made out of glass, the straws. And then at some stage we were sitting, we were talking, she spoke about England, she spoke about various things, the Levitin. Then she said, can I offer you a drink? And she said, Khoshen, would you like to serve? And I said, with great quality, with great honor for me to serve. And I pick up the picture, which has in it beautiful, beautiful cold punch on a nice hot day. And I pour into the Rebbiton's glass, another like six glasses you're going to pour into, I'm pouring into the glass. And then I'm moving my hand back to the other side of the table. And I didn't notice the straw because the straw was made of glass. It was transparent. So my hand on the way back knocked against the straw. The straw knocked against the glass. The glass fell down onto the tablecloth and the punch made the whole tablecloth red. You can imagine what I must have felt like. I was ready to mach and the minute that happened, the Rebetzin gave a big smile and she said, I, it's a simit bracha. It's a sign of bracha. She said, just before away, it's a simit bracha, she said. And my shver, my father-in-law said later on, the Rebetzin looked so happy, he said, that he wanted to knock over another one, make him even happier. But thank God he didn't. So I learned from there, one of the qualities of the Rebetzin was the sensitivity to another person. Every person who ever met the Rebetzin, they will tell you that she was a person who always was thinking, Abbas Yisrael, her life was, and this is not something you can just do. This is something you have to work on yourself, to have the zuchos, to have a feeling for somebody else. In fact, Chobbe Shvat is the yard site of the Rebetzin. It was late at night when she passed away. That same night, Chobbe Shvat, Chobbe at night, she was not feeling well and she went to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And when she got into the car, she was in the car together with Dr. Feldman. Dr. Feldman is a Hossid. He himself was a Balchuva from Tennessee. And, uh, but he's 100% the Hossid and his daughter, uh, whose name then was Sarah Feldman, was engaged to Lady Shemtev, to uh, uh, Yisrael Shemtev's son. And they just got engaged that week. So in, in the car, on the way to the hospital, she was not really, really feeling that well. And you would expect a person as a patient to ask the doctor, what do you think my chances are, how long do you think I'll have to be in the hospital? She, you know, I don't think she expected that this was going to be her last hours, but, but she must have been in pain. And she was in the car with the doctor, you know, my friend is driving, and you know what she asked? She says, when are you making the vote? When are you going to make the l'chaim for your daughter? Is it going to be a big event? She said, and he said, make it small. She said, no, make it big, make it nice. And uh, asked how the, will the colleague get an address made? I don't remember, but she asked, all, all questions were not about herself. It was about this person. And in fact, a few hours later, the Everton said, uh, can you get me a glass of water? She didn't feel one. It says that a lot of tzaddikim, just before they, after 120 years, they passed away, they asked for a glass of water. She took, and her, mother, her grandmother, Yavita Shtay Masara, also the exact same thing happened. She asked for a glass of water. She made the broth in her and uh, she drank it, and shortly after that, she passed away. Um, they say that tzaddikim, they make a shahako, just before they pass away, when she has amazing problems, they'll say, Glory in the Fosh Yisrabis. They'll thank Hashem for creating the Neshama and bringing it back down into this world. So, what, what do we take from here? The tremendous chos, 
Ra'iches Yomim, and and it was so important to her that later on, when she passed away, they asked the Rebbe if she make a very small boy. And the Rebbe said, no, if the maiden should be happy, she should ask you make it bigger than you were going to make it. <coughs> because that's what she told you to do. What did we learn from this? The tremendous force, the tremendous power that there is in our achters together. There's nothing more important than your chaveyim, than your other people, your chaveyim here, your chaveyim overseas, or an other Asian or Lubavitcher. We're all one family, and can I know it's a very, very big family. Halavayat should grow and become many times bigger. But at the same time, each single one of you, and every single one of us, and every single one of the Kindalach, all over the world, is a precious, precious person to HaKadosh Baruch Precious, precious to the Rebbe. Precious, precious to the Rebbe Tim. And we have to appreciate the tremendous courage that each person has. And through the fact that each person is doing what they're supposed to do. Through the fact that they have this appreciation of each other, through that we will see the Zgalas of Mashiach to Cain. Because every time you show after to another Yid, you're bringing out the Mashiach in you. Mashiach is Ma'achet all the Yid. He unites everyone. And when you unite yourself in a proper Torah way with another person, you are bringing out your personal Mashiach. And to all of our efforts, we will bring the dollars of Mashiach HaKloli, Mashiach Tzikeinu, B'Koroi, Amen. Thank you, Rebbe. Thank you, boys. Rebbe, would it be all right if we had the opportunity for two or three questions that the boys can ask you? No problem. No problem. Okay, so this is a very unique opportunity, boys. We have a few minutes just to take a moment or two. If anyone has any questions, that they would like to ask of Rabbi Lu, you could think for a moment. I can start off with one question, and maybe we could take it from there while you could think of other questions that you might want to ask a Chosid who was in 770 for the years of the 1950s by the Rebbe, someone who had the opportunity to meet the Rebbe so many, many times over the course of the years as well, and a veteran Mechanic, of course. Um, there's a story that, that is always told about a child that came to the Rebbe's home and didn't have what to play with, was a little bit uh, antsy and, and didn't uh, look for something to do, and asked the Rebetzin, or so the story goes, um, where are your children? Are you familiar with that? Was that a story that happened with a member of your family, or is that something for somebody else? Rabbi Hoffman, he said, who's there the kinder? The kid came in and said, where are the children? And she said, the children are in? Oh, it's on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, it's the children are 770. Yeah, the Rebbeton looked upon, and she, that's what she was most enough for. It's like a person who didn't have her own physical children, but she actually had millions of children. She adopted every deed in the world as a voice uh, that they should be able to be as they wanted to be. Questions, boys? Does anyone have questions? A bit louder. Is there, is there another personal story you could share with us? Another personal story that you could share with us, either with the Rebbe or the Rebbe's name? A Yechidus, maybe? Is there another personal story you could share with us? Yeah, is that another story? With the Rebbe's With the Rebbe or the Rebbe's name? A Yechidus. I'll just say that the Rebbeton, uh, uh, she was able to relate even to little children, not just to be into... Rebbeton herself was a good cousin. She knew a lot. She was very, very, very close with the Rebbe Rashab, the fifth Rebbe. That means her father's father. She was one of the closest people to him. She used to look after him, and she was not a little baby when he passed away. She was 18 years old. Uh, 19 years old. When the Rebbe Rashab was in Stalin. Just after her 19th birthday. And she said, even when she was in her 80s, 
the time when I grew up, she said, I still remember the Negunim, that he would say, wherever the Shabbat would daven by the Yichas, and he would sing Negunim when he daven. And she says, I remember the exact Negunim that he sang. And this was like years and years, 60 years later. And um, when the Friedrich Rebbe was freed on Gimel Tammuz and sent to Kastrema, sent to exile for, they said it was for three years, but in the end he went out on Gimel Tammuz. <coughs> but they, the Russians, the communists said, you can go with one person you can take with you. In other words, the Rebbe needed someone to help, to help him in whatever he was doing. So he could have asked for any chosse, any family, but wherever it was, and the person that the Friedrich and Rebbe said to come with him was the Rebbe Sinchai Moshke. I want you to understand that she was an, a very, very um, sharp, knowledgeable woman, understood very well, and uh, it, it, so she wasn't just a person who had nothing. She could appreciate spending a, a few hours a day with the Rebbe, but what she did was she said, it's for Kalan Yisrael. To understand that, and at the same time, that same Rebetzin, I have a daughter, and the daughter now has uh, several children. But she was a little girl, about one year old, two years yeah. old, and the Rebetzin said, come to Doda. She like, spoke to her like very, like, like just like a person who looks after little children, who know just exactly how, and we give them a little candy, we give them a little sweet, whatever it happens to be. And um, she, she related, uh, when I went there with our children, she would ask each child to do what they did, like one boy was just a mitzvah, a son. And uh, she listened to him say the toichen of the pilpul that he was going to say his bar mitzvah. To. She listened to the whole, the Gemara, and the Baba Kama, and the Shosh and Lord, and whatever it was, uh, she listened to that. And then another son was brought younger, and he said, she said, what do you want to say? He says he wants to sing a nigan. And he sang the bang with me. And she, there was a little tear in her eye. She said, it was, uh, and then he asked her, do you know that song? She said, yes, it's my father's song. And, and, uh, and so with each child, she was able to find the Pesach, the point of contact, which would help her to relate to where that person was. And if you speak to people who are much older, a man or women, more, less, whatever it happened to be, she found a point, and it was right, I was once there, Yod Aleph Shvat Tov Shin Mem. A very big time with the Rebbe's uh, 30th anniversary of the Rebbe's leadership. And I, was, I went to New York, I was in middle school, so I couldn't do it, I, went, I was in Crown Heights for less than 24 hours. Got here on Yud Shvat, the day of the Fabanga went straight to 770. I didn't, I didn't even, I had nothing to eat. I told one of my kids, or so I, I told somebody to go and get me food on Kingston Avenue. So I, I took my place. The next day I went back to the airport. I was away. In the afternoon, I went with my shver to the Rebbeton. And there was also a couple of other Hasidim there, Shmuel Haifa, Shmuel was there. Um, and the Rebbeton was talking about England. And she said everything, she talked about the book that came out, the, the woman about it, she said everything that England produces is with, is with a flavor, with a tongue, something good. She, but she had something positive to relate to every single person. Thank you very much, Rabbi Lou. I promised uh, Rabbi Schmuckler, Rabbi Engel, that by 120 or so, we'll be able to start getting you back on the road because you have to be back there already. So we really appreciate the fact that now she slept in for this 25 minutes. Just for this group. Just for this group. It, uh, it, it, was, it, it was on behalf of our children in England. And I should be able to go back and say that these wonderful Siddisha Kindalach in Los Angeles send them special regards. Thank you very much, Rebbe um, I just want to tell the boys in Kipchess that when Rebbe Lou walked into the shul, we saw Mabel, his first question to him was, new? A new safer, maybe? Because Rebbe Lou already has the first six volumes of Rachel Atzlacha, volume seven he does not have up until this moment. And we're going to present him with volume seven of Rachel Atzlacha that came out last year, Yudal Nissen. And the boys are working now on gathering stories 
for volume eight, but it's Hashem for this year, you don't listen. So I just wanted to say, if you since it's volume seven, I give you seven words uh, of, of appreciation, but it didn't start yet. Thank you very much. How much is that? Call Ashbin Habibin. Very well said. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Boys, we're looking for those more stories. For more of those stories, we can put together volume eight. Please bring them in yesterday so that we can go to print. Free Alf Nissen next year and be able to print. Give Rabbi Lou when he speaks.